All right, guys, welcome back. You're Mark and Tom, TCG and Whiskey here. We're just going to be going over some of the hot topics going on. It's a good one. We got some eh, Patty Pimlet making his debut, rocking the Ooh. house. Don't know why they didn't give him a full crowd. Dude is electric. Tom, let's go over Patty first before we get into anything else. And I know you want to have a little quick shout out. What do you think of Patty? Who's his next? Who's his next guy? Where does he go? Tell us a little bit. Love Patty, man. Loved his performance. Want to give a quick shout out though. TampaBlast.com put out a blog today, um, but you could check directly. Studio 316 show. My brother is involved. Shevin's involved. A bunch of Team Do Good members are involved in that in one way or another through Crossboss Media or stu or through Studio 316 show. It launched today. Get your kids involved. It targets ages seven to twelve, and it's fun, funny and faith-filled studio316.com it's free you can always donate but it is free all right that's it back to patty thank you very much mark patty i think i think they're going to ease patty in a little bit i don't think they're going to throw him straight into the deep waters and i don't think they should if you take a look at the lightweight top 15 number 15 right now is tiago moises he's no joke you're going to give that, give him Patty? I mean, possibly. I think a good fight, if you're going to do that, if you're going to go into the top 15, I would stay in the 10 to 5s. I'd give him Brad Riddell. Brad Riddell would be a nice throwdown because he'd be down to scrap it too. But do I, do I think they're going to give him somebody like Brad? Possibly, but I could eat. I would not recommend, nor do I think they're going to give anybody below Brad, like deeper into the waters, like 10 or minus on that one to 10 spot. I don't think that's a smart move. I think it's too quick. Brad would be a sweet fight just as far as matchups go. Other than that, somebody outside of the top 15. All right. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of think they want to shoot him along, but they don't want to shoot him along at the same time. First, I think never put him in the apex again. You saw how much electricity right. the guy brings. He needs a full crowd. The guy can headline by himself fighting a nobody and be fine. You can put him and the Sugar Show on one card with nobody else, no title shot, and those dudes are going to sell out the stadium. No question in my mind on that one. Personally, I love Patty Pimlet. The hype is there. The hype is real. Oh, yeah, I like him too. The kids. He's a fun guy. Kid's electric. I mean, he took some shot and just kept walking oh, forward. Such a crack, man. Yeah, it just kept walking forward. Looked unbelievable. I buckled him, though, real quick. Guys it did got, buckle him real quick. It did buckle him, but he didn't go down. Guys got awesome expressions and move. Ah, he, he's fun. I think there's a few guys in the top 15, though. I mean, personally, I think he has a real shot against Tiago Moises. Um, like you said, Brad Wright else, a decent one. I think Diego Ferreira is number 11. I think that'd be a great matchup for him. Diego's a little older. He's looked great, but we saw Gregor just wear him out in his last time out. And he breaks into maybe number 10. You get another fight. I don't think Diego made weight either last time. He, he might not have. So, I mean, I think Patty just, he's a showcase piece. I do think they should give him somebody outside the top 15. I don't want to say a warm-up guy. There's no tune-up guys in the UFC. There's really not. These guys can all fight. If you're in the UFC, pretty much you're. You're a stud. But I I agree. Patty, work him in. Maybe one more fight out of the top 15. Then you start bringing this kid right up the top 15 ladder. We saw them all call him out. He holds his head high, and he did get cracked on it when they called him out. So maybe he just works on one or two things. We don't know where he's training, if he's going back home, training in his regular gym or now, that he's going to be fighting probably more in the U.S. If, they bring him over, if he comes over here and starts training in one of these – America top teams or if he's at Couture in Vegas since that's where a lot of the fights are or whatever. We don't know. But I, but I agree. I love how Patty, Patty the laddie in many ways because he loves to say lad. Yeah, I love Patty. <laughs> Patty the baddie. All right. <laughs> then we got Jorge not calling out Nick Diaz, but Jorge saying if Nick Diaz wins – he really liked that fight. He's admired Nick Diaz's work over the years. He thinks it would be electric. There's already like, it's not like a true beef, but there's already some of that 
beef between the brothers. Jorge versus Nick Diaz. Well, what do you think about that one? Does that one work for both of them? Is it better for one or the other? What do you think? You're a huge fan. Those are probably your top two favorite fighters right there, Tom. Outside of McGregor. Well, that's probably it for you, right? Yeah. Well, and Nate, of course. Right. The Diaz bros, yep, and then Jorge. Yeah, agreed. And, you know, and Connor, of course. But what I think, I think it would be dope. I mean, I think that's a great matchup. I think it's one thing at a time, though, because Robbie Lawler is no joke. And I'm a fan of Robbie Lawler as well. He's not in my top four, but he's up there for me. I like Robbie, man. He's a legend, and I love his style as well. I love that matchup between him and Nick. Uh, if Nick does win, Jorge could be the matchup for him. I don't think Jorge should wait for that fight, though. I think Jorge should be – they should be trying to force Leon's hand. I think Leon or Luque should fight Jorge. That would be just – I think Leon Jorge, and we've already discussed this, like Leon Jorge is going to sell. That's going to sell. Jorge's already a big draw, and the previous beef, you got to have that drama. That drama really sells, man, and that's some good drama there. That's real. Edward still has a scar from when Jorge cracked him in that post-fight uh, scrap they had over there. I think Luque would be good for Jorge, too, if Leon just wants to keep holding out. Because I think Leon has more of a... If I just wanted to say who is more worthy of holding out, Luque or Leon, I would say Leon's more worthy to hold out for a title shot than Luque. Just because I think he's earned it a little bit more. Yeah, he's on a, you know. like a nine-fight win streak, I believe. He's in, impressive, too. Outside of the yeah. fourth round or the fifth round with uh, Nate Diaz... It, very impressive right. wins and everything like that, too. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, no, he looks good, and he looks jacked, too. Like, he's looking in great shape. So you're saying no to that fight, though. You think Jorge should be trying to fight someone in the in-between? Don't hold out for Yeah, him. definitely. Definitely. Let's get it going, man. How long you want to sit out? I, I think Jorge's made a lot of money. I think he is on that Diaz wagon where he wants to sit out and just take some prize fights, and that's it. I think he Well he Jorge Jorge was also uh discussing fighting the Paul brothers, but he's under contract and Dana would have to agree to that. It's kind of a little bit of a pipe dream because there's no way Dana's agreeing to that in my mind, but you never know, I guess. But Jorge's been hypothesizing about it. I, I feel like Jorge talks about he wants to get back to the belt, but I don't think he wants to get back to the belt. I think he he wants the money fights. I think he's over mm. the belt. I think he realizes as long as Kamaro has it, he's not getting the belt. He's not beating Kamaro Usman. I mean, you could say what you I want. Kamaro might not have it. He might not. Kobe might take he, it. He might be Kobe. And that would set up a great beef match, too. Well, then he might start calling out Kobe. But right now, as long as Kamaro has it, I don't see him. I don't even think the UFC gives him a shot. So I think waiting for Nick's fighting right around the corner. That's a pretty close fight. I don't think it's too long for... Jorge to wait out and see if Nick takes significant damage, wins the fight. Like you said, Robbie Lawler could knock him out in the first round. We don't know. Lawler's very impressive himself. Can Nick still take a punch? We haven't seen him in the octagon in, what, six and a half, seven years now almost? Right. So, right. I mean, we, we don't know. There's a lot of unknowns. I like Jorge waiting out for that fight. I like Jorge versus Nick Diaz right away. Brings Nick Diaz right back into the public eye instantly fighting Jorge. I mean, fighting Lawler, he's back in public eye, but instantly he gets that big scenery again fighting Jorge. And it's good for Nick because his suspension was bullshit and everything like that. So I like it. I like him waiting out. I like him getting If he wins, beats Lawler, I like him fighting Jorge. And I like him putting some limelight back on his name. The I mean, guy was unbelievable worries. back in the day. People don't probably, yeah, probably people Nick. weren't watching him. Nick was, I think Nick was a lot better I mean, than, go watch than Nate. That. He was I mean, unbelievable. He has so many, yeah. so many good fights. He was, he was nasty. But, I mean, I still, I like that, but I would prefer, in the meantime, Jorge go and book a fight with Luque or Leon. I think, I think if they want the money and you want to get a nice pay and some good views, do it with Leon. If you want to just have a straight scrap, either one then. Luke just doesn't have the pull yet. But Luke does have the performance, and he'll bring it. Oh, Luke, I love watching Luke fight. 
Yeah, he's nasty. Yeah. So I also like Diaz. If say Jorge fights and Diaz doesn't line it up with Jorge, I would. If Diaz wins, I still would like to see him versus Bilal. I think would be a good matchup as well. But obviously Jorge still has like the BMF belt supposedly. I think at this point uh, that could immediately come into play. And Nick Diaz that's is what I'm a talk- perfect That's BMF. what I'm talking about. That could be the BMF. I, I like it. I like the weight out for it. Yeah. I think it's a, a cunning move for if if Nick even takes it. You never know what Nick's thinking either. I mean, right. but I do I do like it. Gives Give that name back to Nick Diaz. The guy was unbelievable. Let him jump back up a little bit. Now we, I mean, if he wins, it'll be. Yeah. He deserves his, it. His though. name's gonna ring hard. Oh yeah. Uh, no, I, I agree. You know. All right, let's move on. All right, what do we got? We got. Should the UFC make knee kicks illegal? The the teak kicks that smash the dude's knee. We saw it versus Modestus Bacalcus. His knee just straight buckled on him. Uh, Cully Roundtree hit him. It was a beautiful kick. Bukowskis should have seen. I don't want to say should. I, listen, I'm not in the cage. But Bukowski, he was lining that kick up th- multiple times prior. Bukowskis was just not aware to it, almost like he didn't think he could hit him with it or something. It was kind of, it was weird. And Roundtree just basically had to get up to him and stomp on his knee to get the power and ferocity that mm. he got. It was, it was kind of, it, it to me it looked Bukowskis just didn't look on that night. He looked a little off, and he was moving around, and he still. Got that knee off. So do you, a lot of the fighters wanted illegal. Bukowskis himself says he should have defended it better. Give the guy a break. Give the guy's props on the victory. Great move by Bukowskis. A couple points up for me, not trying to take away a guy's shine. And what do you think about that? Should we make something illegal? Should the UFC make knee kicks illegal? Or- I mean, I wouldn't cry about it if they did. I don't see it being that major of a player couple instances where it's come into play and you're talking to the ufc since ufc won it's almost 28 years we haven't heard much talk of this ever being a big issue this time yeah the guy got buckled so it's kind of in the limelight now people are saying immediately to kind of you know cancel it let's cancel knee kicks you know um okay but i wouldn't i don't really see it as necessary it hasn't really posed that big of a deal over 28 years you know, but would I cry over it? No, just because it's not that big of a player. All right. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I wouldn't want to cancel this. It's a cage fight. You'd like the guys to be able to use all the weapons available to them. I mean, are you going to take away, like, ankle locks and uh, all kinds of weird maneuvers that possibly can crack a knee or twist your ligaments or anything like that? I mean, then you're starting to – now we're getting into a boxing or kickboxing match. We're breaking away wrestling. From, yeah, we're breaking away from cage fighting. I, I I agree that it looks brutal when it happens, but it doesn't happen often. I'd actually personally like to them to do something about so many kicks to the nuts. These guys need to be penalized a little mm-hmm. harder. It totally changes the fights. And listen, mm-hmm. I understand totally that most of the time it's an accident. But we saw last night. It was an accident the first mm-hmm. time. Dude was losing. Accident the first time. Knocks this guy unwinded. And then does it his second time. Doesn't get called for it. We saw that. And then hits. Sousa, the, I think was his name. Yeah, Sousa versus uh, Chichi. Chich, 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 Chich. It was on the Dana White Chich, contender Chich, stand. Yeah. Then he does it a third time. Dude is sitting there in pain. I mean. You yeah. those were he needed And there was him. one in between it that no, they yeah, that's showed what I'm that he didn't complain about. He got him and it totally changes the fight. This dude's losing. Now he has a chance to recover. I mean, I was just so happy he came and he finished him for those knee kicks. Yeah, yeah. But we saw the other week in Gerald Mearshart versus Muradov, Mearshart gets him and just yeah. changes the whole fight. He was getting dominated. Gives him a chance to breathe. Yeah. And then yeah. he stopped the he stopped he reversed the momentum. Reversed the momentum. It's it's I'm, I understand one times an accident's gonna happen, but they gotta go do something with two times is an instant point. It's not even a discussion of oh the referee can decide it. It's it's too often right now. It's almost every fight. There's some kind of mm. 
eye poke or knee kick and it could really stagger the fight to where the momentum's just not there you got a guy dazed and he gives you a knee shot now you're on the ground it's horrible it's it's i mean a nut shot and it's it's bad i've been watching too often i'd rather them address something with that than the knee kicks that happens once every 10 years right all right one we got a quick one here Tom, do you think fighters should unionize? We see Paul is working behind Dana. Well, actually, it's in front of Dana's back now. He's working to try to get UFC fighters unionized and make Dana open up the pockets. What do you think about that? I think it's, I mean, Tito Ortiz tried it back in the day. I think it's a good idea for them. Do I think it's going to happen? I think probably unlikely, but it could happen. Do I think it's smart to do and a good idea for them? I do. And I thought it was back when Tito really tried to get it together, but it just never really panned out. Yeah. What do you think's holding them back? I'm not sure. I don't know if there's some type of inner political pressure not to align things with things like that. I don't know. Yeah. It's a, it's there can a weird be, thing. It can get, it's very political. Number one, that's the whole purpose of the union is to side with the fighters against administration. So it's obviously a bit of a power move if you're looking at it from an administrative standpoint. Yeah, I mean, definitely from the administrative standpoint, we've seen it. Amazon, Walmart, Monsters don't want to do it. I feel like these fighters could get paid a a much larger chunk, though, if they all came together and try to go for a piece of the pie there and got the union on their side. I don't know how complicated. I think they only need 51% vote, which I think there's over 600 guys on the roster now. So over 300 guys would need to come on board and give their signature saying they want it. And you just never know. You don't know, but I think they should. Yeah, you have to have it where there's no retribution. Like, if, say, it comes back 48% and you didn't get it, and then Dana gets a sniff of who are all the people that voted for it, and if they're not major players, use that against them. Right. No, of course, there shouldn't be any. I, I believe it's... A, and I'm not saying he would ever do that, but that's... De- I'm I not believe that's, would very, ever do that, that's some- very illegal if they caught him doing it like that. I mean, if he, like... You're not going to have the union there, which has already put those things into play to defend that type of thing is all I'm saying. Right. So if the union didn't actually become a union, if the vote didn't actually go in favor and you never established the union, there can be repercussions for having been part of the lead for that movement. Yeah. I think Tito did some of that for sure, but he was a superstar. Yeah. He always hated Tito, so it makes sense. Yeah. All right, let's. we won't talk too much about legal jargon on that end but who do you got next for Brunson does Brunson get Adesanya next does he shoot right up does he have to take someone else in the in the meantime while he waits because Adesanya's already got a fight versus uh Whitaker the Reaper so Bobby Knuck Bobby Knuckles I love Bobby Knuckles Bobby Knuckles reigned supreme for a long time oh, I'd like to say of- he can go in there and get it done but Adesanya's a freak. Adesanya is a ninja in the ring, man. Guys don't even see him coming. Knuckles didn't see him coming. He just got slept. Adesanya is so good, I would not put my money against Adesanya at middleweight. At middleweight. So I think it's going to be a really good one. I think, you know, uh, Whitaker definitely has. I like both fighters, but I think Whitaker has a solid chance at that. But back to your question, I think Brunson does have – the ability to wait for the winner of that fight. And he should. And I think he should be next in line. You think we got, though, just just for reference here, we got Paul Costa, who's supposed to fight, I believe, Vittori. If, Correct. And Paul Costa's number two. He's only lost once, and that was to the champ. You think he right. jumps over? Or Jared Cannonier is number three. Do these guys leapfrog over for the title shot? I think Brunson should leapfrog over and get another shot at the title. I think Vittori and Acosta and Paul Acosta, you know, they were very recent, especially if, uh, you know, Israel wins. I mean, 
If Robert wins, then I think they have a better argument to 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 take it. That's a big effort. But if right Israel there. wins, right? But if Israel wins, I think that Brunson has put himself in a position for a rematch. He's also lost to Israel in the past. Right. Everybody at middleweight's basically lost to Israel. The guy is. He's good. That's all there is to it. The guy is talented out there. Is oh yeah. He's really he's a ninja. But Brunson's no joke. Brunson's he's I don't I mean, think he, he gets Adesanya to the ground as hard as he tries. I don't think he gets him to the ground. If he gets him to the ground once, he, the only guy who's ever kept Adesanya on the ground at all has been Jan at a much larger size. Jan Blahovich was a heavyweight down to light heavyweight. Probably weighs in at least two twenty five on fight day. And he's the only one able to keep Adesanya down. And he couldn't do anything. Because Adesanya was too squirmy down there. Basically did nothing. Marvin Vittori, all right, he does all right work. I, listen, I'm a big Marvin Vittori fan. But he was not taking down and holding down Adesanya. Just wasn't mm-hmm. happening. At least not yet. Yeah, I. but back to Brunson. I think, my opinion, Brunson's earned it. I think he can wait for that fight. I think Brunson don't wait out because somebody could leapfrog you. But so who who do you think Brunson should fight then? I mean, take take on Strickland, rising star. You want put some more, put some more on your name. Brunson's been knocking out all the newcomers. Honestly, I I thought Strickland has a fight. Well, he's fighting Rockhold. He's going to demolish Rockhold in about one one second. That's not even a fight right <laughs> okay. there. Okay. Right. Okay. But I mean Bronson's beating some good guys here, but he's still he's not he's he has he's not beating these top tier dudes right now. He's beating all these newcomers that are coming up. Hey, listen, he beat him. He beat Holland, Shabazian, and he just put some work in. But I mean he just beat Till. You thought you didn't even think that you thought Till was up. Everybody, Till was the favorite. He beat Till. Yeah, he beat Till, but Till has. What does Till won at, at middleweight? Beating one guy at middleweight. I mean, I don't even know if you. I'm just saying he was the favorite. Yeah, well, I mean, listen, he fo- he fooled us. Till hasn't. Till has. He didn't fool me. I picked Bronson. He hasn't. He hasn't beaten anyone at middleweight. So yeah, it's uh, I think Derek deserves it. I think he should push for that. But like you said, could he get Lee Prague? I don't think there's another good fight for him. That's, you know, if he's gonna get Lee Prague, he'll know right away because there's fights that are happening right now. So you you have that Costa fight lined up. You'll see who wins that. Definitely don't go for the who's loser. A, of that. Who's Jared Cannonier fighting? I'm not sure if Cannonier has a fight lined up. No, he just fought, so he doesn't have yeah, one well, lined up. Yeah, there you up. go. Janet Carinier is but ranked ahead of him. I think he should fight. I know that, but I don't think he should go for that. I think he should go for the title. Why would you want to go for Cannonier to what? Jump two spots just to give yourself a two at the at, It's only a two, two spot move, right. and it's yeah. risky. I don't Cannonier think it's worth the risk. He's in my getting mind. the next title shot, so we'll see. I mean, he's got an argument as well, but we'll see. I, I, I think Brunson myself, but, I mean, if they really wanted to square it off and say, if the UFC was to say, look, the winner of this gets the winner of Israel Robert, then definitely fight Jared. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the fight to me. All right, but enough on, enough on you know, these if, guys. If, but if, well, let's just be clear. If they were going to be like, hey, fight Jared, but you still might not get the shot, uh, Vittorio well, or Costa I mean, you almost might, gotta get no the way. shot if you beat Jared's number three and you're on now you're on a six fight win streak or whatever. You almost gotta take you almost gotta figure he's got the shot. I know, but the winner of Costa or Vittori could again nah, possibly edge I don't think so. Well that was your argument just yeah, a because, ago that you were gonna Brunson get Brunson hasn't props. beat anyone in the top five. He has not beaten anyone in the top five. But that's not prerequisite to get a He's title shot. He's only beaten shot. one dude in the top ten. Darren Till, who doesn't belong in the top ten, personally. Take a take. I mean, right. Well, I said my opinion. That's that's just where it yeah. is. I think I think Derek Brunson's right there, and he's has. 
I think a legitimate claim and a title shot, if not fight Cannoneer, but with the idea that this is a prerequisite to the title shot. And that's good for Cannoneer as well. Because both of them, just time-wise and chronologically, I think, give them a shot at the title, being that those guys just had shots. So the last time... Costa just had one. Yeah. One bit of a tour. Like I said, though, the last time he fought a top 10 opponent was Adesanya and Sosa. And he lost. I'm just throwing it out there for Brunson. Okay. That doesn't beat a top yeah. 10, dude. Just, just saying. All right, but now. Then, that, then tell me how he got ranked number five. You win, you get, you keep going up. The rankings don't mean I'm don't mean saying, a ton, dude. but I'm they mean saying, something. You didn't just magically get number five. You know, you didn't magically get that. That's a top five spot. He's number four. It says he's up one. All right, so number four. I mean, it is. You know, you're not leapfrogging many. Not like you're pulling some number 11 fighting for the title here. All right, let's move on. we got one more point I, w- I want to bring up. Does Dern versus Marina Rodriguez leapfrog over Carla Esparza, who's been waiting, thinking she deserves a title shot? Personally, I think the UFC does not love Carla. Her fighting style is very boring. She's not a huge following on social media or anything like that. I think, what do you think about that? Do you think whoever wins uh, Mackenzie Dern versus Marina Rodriguez leapfrogs over Carla for the next title shot? I mean, the title shot's there, so it's, it's not like you have to rush into it. Or does Carla sit out and try to get it? Again, it's a similar argument that you just made for Brunson. Absolutely. Uh, do I think, no, no, but in this case, if they leapfrog, it would be just like if Derek... Derek did, except actually ranked. So no, Carla's number three. I know, but I'm not talking about her because she would be getting leapfrogged. Well, Mackenzie's number four, so it wouldn't be that much of a leapfrog. No, that'd be the same. Mackenzie would be the same, but if Mackenzie loses, what's the other girl at Marina? Number five. Okay, so yeah, it's Six. not too much. It's a similar Six. scenario. So there's tie. There's a tie for four for whatever reason. And Marina's six, so there's no five, technically. Right. So, so it would be the same exact scenario as Derek Brunson. Do I think it could happen? Absolutely, I think it could happen. Do I think it should happen in this case? I do not. I think Carla has earned it, and she deserves it. All right. I think Carla better not sit out. I think she better not try to wait for the title shot. I think she gets leapfrogged. Brunson might not get leapfrogged. I think... If Mackenzie Dern wins, she has a massive following. People really like her. She easily can leapfrog. She's beating Marina Rodriguez. It's not like she's going in and fighting a chump next. She's going to fight a top-tier woman in the top five. Of course, I think she's going to get it. I think Carla Esparza, like I said, her fighting style is boring. I don't think they really they will give it to her, but I don't think that's like their number one choice of who they want her to she did. Fight. She is coming off a finish, though. It's like her first finish in like a million fights. It's all right. You can get it on a roll. It's your most recent. That's what counts. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. Hey, listen, I. I mean, and and didn't didn't Carla already beat? Yeah, I mean, twenty years ago, two thousand. Okay, two thousand fourteen. Still, would Rose, Rose want to? It and that's if Rose beats uh, Wei, uh, Wei Lee. But if Rose beats Wei Lee again, I don't see why Rose would back off that one to clean up that, to clean up, clean that up, and have a little bit of vengeance herself. Because Carla's got a legitimate. Not only has she earned that spot, she can also say, "Look, I've already beat this person." My bold prediction is from here, before we even get to that card, Wei Li Zhang is going to reclaim the title. My prediction. I think if Wei Li claims it, Carla's position, she still deserves it, but I don't think it's quite as strong of a, like, I don't think she has quite the, like, marketing aspect as if it's play it as in a person that's already beat Rose. There's a revenge aspect. If it's not that, I still think 
that she deserves it, but I don't think marketing wise it lines up quite the same and she might get leapfrogged a little easier. I think it really depends who wins the fight. If Mackenzie wins, I think Mackenzie can leapfrog. I think if Marina wins, I think Carla will hold next because Carla has beaten her in prior fights. But Dern is 11 and 1, only losses right after she gave birth. To a game opponent, I mean, Amanda Hebos is, is awesome, but that was her only loss. It was right after she gave birth. You can tell she was not ready for that fight. She looks in 10 times better shape every time out now. Her nutrition is on point and everything like that. I think Darren leapfrogs her. One loss. I think it's definitely, look, let me put it like this. Could it happen? Of course it could. What do I, if, if I was the one that said, what do I think should legitimately happen here? What's the right thing to do? Carla gets the fight no matter who wins the fight, Wiley or Rose. Carla gets it. Reality is, though, like you just said, she could be leapfrogged much easier by Dern than by Rodriguez. That's it. Yeah, I think she does. I don't know. I don't think she should be. But will she be? It's possible, and I do think it depends on who wins. So, I mean, if Dern wins, I'll still I'll be pushing and hoping for Carla to get that shot. But do I think that Dern could easier, more easily leapfrog? Of course. Marina, like you just said, I don't see even if she wins, it doesn't even make sense. You already had a loss to the girl ahead of you. Yeah. How are you going to jump her? That's that's like clearly no, I don't. I don't see Marina jumping, but I see if if Dern wins, Dern is. What's that Dern fight? That's October. Um, I don't. Let me see the date on Dern. Fight night. Yeah, October 9th. Dern fights Marina. One month. And. Okay. I mean, Dern has finished a lot of fights. It's not like she's been out there for like one or two. I mean, at I know, her four-fight win streak, she has three finishes. No other girl's doing that. Let's just be real. No girl in the straw or in the uh, straw weight division is finishing girls like Mackenzie Dern is. It's just not happening. Okay. So I. Well, you think because you finished people, you deserve to leapfrog somebody that has. Earned it more than you. I don't think she has earned it more than her. Mackenzie Dern's on a win streak. And she's only lost one time ever. Carla's fought much tougher people. And she's lost to them, though. That's that's a big no, factor. She's, she's beat them, too. She's beat them as well. But she's lost to a ton of the top opponents. She's Carla has a lot of significant... She does. One being we just brought some up. Of them I all, some her of them I also recent, thought. Even her most recent was a bit of a surprise. A lot of people didn't even think she was going to come out as strong as she did in her last fight. I and also she finished think it. Carla's been on the right end and wrong end of some decisions to get her there. Yeah, but Mackenzie can't claim that she's ever beat Carla or the other way around. That hasn't happened yet. We'll see who leapfrogs who there. I mean, I think they both have a legitimate shot at the belt. I don't think I think between those four, I don't think that anybody is getting complete like it's not I don't think the the betting odds are gonna be that far apart. Yeah, we'll see. Because I think Whaley, Rose, it's not like I don't think that they have the type of lead. Like Carla's already beaten Rose and Mackenzie's I think right up there with them, close into that to where it's not like, hey, this is gonna be some Another just joke of a, you know, kind of like the Nunez fights. Nothing against the people that fight Nunez, but they have been jokes. <laughs> okay, they're not on the same level. That Megan Anderson was like, it almost seemed like they threw the fight or something. She, she threw in the towel so quickly, it was over. Yeah. I was like, how the heck did you even been up for this? No, nah, Amanda Nunez is definitely on another level. No, I mean, you never you know. know. And then you have Valentina. You, you never know. And then you have Valentina that's on a on another level too to where it's like okay but when you have rose i think rose is definitely super high level but in her division i think it's just the competition's tighter 
Oh, Rose is extremely high level. I picked her to beat Whaley, but I'm already made my prediction. Yeah, but I mean, you're talking all those those four that we just named: Whaley, Carla, Rose, Sorry. and Mackenzie. Those are all high level fighters. It's not like the same to where like, hey, look, they're all high level, but I'm talking about top shelf. All right, there's a difference between top shelf and second shelf, significant in a lot of these other women's weight classes. This one, it goes a few in there deep. Like you have a few on the top shelf. No, you have you have a lot. I you know you could argue about it, but I mean I think like those are fights that are worth making. You know that people want to see that you could that really do boost a card. I'm not going to say they're going to necessarily always be the main event, but they could co-main. Rose could be a main. Yeah, I mean Rose Lee, they could they could lead a card. Yeah, I mean so could so could Joanna. Joanna's up there too. Yeah, jo- Joanna too. If you if you line up one of those fights, but I don't think Nunez can because it's not as big of a draw because the competition isn't what there. What about versus Kayla Harrison? Okay, I'm definitely tuning in, and I hope that is a big enough draw to lead it. But I still think just to make ensure the views line that up under a nice belt, another belt. Yeah, well, that's what fight. they do for Nunez. They don't. They never give her the main anymore, really. Yeah. She just can't. But, yo, how about that? I'm I'm not going to get too sidetracked here, but, yo, how about that September card? 266? Oh, there's looks there's crazy. a lot of really good cards coming up. There is. There's a lot Holy of Holy cow. 266 MSG. Wow. Both those cards are stacked up. One thing I just wanted to ask you before we finish up here, and it kind of goes back to the whole that you thought it was a good idea for Jorge to sit out and wait for Nick. Do you think ultimately, no matter how much trash talk happens in you know, these hypothetical situations that are brought up all the time, do you think the reality is that the next time Connor and Nate Diaz fight is actually going to be against each other? Oh, I don't know. Probably next summer. Against each other? You don't think he's going to go for Dustin Poirier again? Well, I think it's going to be Nate versus Connor. Before that fight, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't given much thought to that. I'm not sure because now Nate, now Dustin's talking about fighting Charles. Yeah, he's gonna fight Charles, but the question is, so, I mean, if he wins, then Connor Connor would be in the perfect position. He'll go for that first, and it'd be the biggest money because he could potentially get the belt. It'd be so much hate happening. I already talked about this. It would be amazing. But say, outside of that. Nate and Nate might even wait for that to happen and then catch up with Connor after that. Yo, to me, like, Nate's got to stay just active. Can't tell. When is he's got to stay active. When's Nate going to fight? Who's I he going to fight? I don't know. He's got to stay a little active because he's definitely. I mean, he's not a spring chicken anymore. He's. I mean, who's he going to fight? He can fight anyone he wants. I don't know. Oh, everybody he wants is like a belt holder. I mean, he hasn't really earned any shots <laughs> at the belt holders. <laughs> he's like, yo, I'll fight Usman, you know, Connor, Dustin. He's not going to go down and wait, so he doesn't. He's not going to fight Charles or any of those guys unless they go up to fight him. I do think, you know, a guy like Gaethje or something would be a nice fight, man. If obviously Gaethje would have to go up to a different weight, but I still think that would be a nice fight. He's already lined up, though. If he beats Chandler, he's got a shot at the belt. But if he loses to Chandler, I think that Diaz fight opens up. I think, uh, listen, call out Kiesa. Kiesa just had that tough loss. Like Kiesa get in there. I would like that. Kiesa get in there. That would be a good one. Yeah. But, I mean, there's got to be another another challenger for, for Nate to get to get rolling. I mean, I don't know why we don't run back Nate Jorge, honestly. I don't either, but I mean, put that. That seems to not be. On you the got you got anymore. the bad motherfucker belt on the line, and you got both guys really need a win, in my opinion. They need a win, and Jorge didn't really finish that fight. We all know he won the fight. I agree, and I think it sell. They both make money. Yeah, they both make a ton of money. And I don't know. Sell. It's a good fight. I'm with that too. I'm totally with that. But I just I've kind Seven of my round head main event give, for giving up on that. Is. Yo, they should. They should do a catch weight. No, but seven rounds. 
Seven rounds. Or fight, fight to the finish for those two. <laughs> yeah, but even if they just upped it to one, let's just do six rounds. No, but fight to the finish for you guys. That's it. I'll just do old school. Yeah, we have like that old school Gracie matches to where it just, you know, it just goes on forever and ends in a draw. No, no draws. You got to finish. <laughs> <laughs> but I, all right, let's roll it. Uh, all right, guys. Appreciate right, you joining man. us today. Hopefully all you guys are stuck around. Like, subscribe, join. We'll see you guys soon.